guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We are now into December. Crazy. Which we have a storm warning this evening. I, you know, it's weird. There's a storm warning in my weather app, but then it also just has clouds. Oh, huh. Uh, you know, if you look hour by hour, it says that some areas are to expect like three inches of snow. Hmm. That'd be kind of fun. It would be fun. Because it's supposed to warm up, right? It is. Next week is supposed See, to warm up a bit. that would be perfect if we actually got some snow. Because mm -hmm. I was like it when you get fresh snow and, and it just then goes go away. away. It's when, though, it doesn't warm up quite enough or long enough for it to all go in. You end up with that patchy, muddy sort yeah. of mess going on. But I don't know. I was looking through my photo reel last night just because I was craving color. And I almost shared one on Instagram. But I was like, no, hold. <laughs> hold. It's only hold December. For, yes, December 1st. Yeah, so I did not. I shared a... Christmas picture, I think. Yeah. No, I don't think I even posted anything yesterday, <gasps> which feels weird, but I don't know. These days, I've just been feeling so relaxed yeah. and so chill about stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for spring. We've got like some really fun stuff. What is it? To expect in the spring. Um, not a baby. I know oh. people are going <laughs> to automatically think that. That is 0% the case at any point going forward. Um, but no, the garden developments. There's some really fun stuff in the works that we'll be able to share about here. I hate being that person that like kind of like hints at something. But yeah. um, we'll be able to share hopefully by the end of December. Place your guesses. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So some fun stuff um, that we have to look forward to. And it just kind of makes you want to. We're moving. No, we're not moving <laughs> for crying out loud. <laughs> we're not moving. We're not having a baby. That is, those are two things you can strike from the list. Um, I think <laughs> before we digress <laughs> further, I need to just jump into the videos from this past week. The first one was pond maintenance and prepping a tropical water lily for winter storage, which I did end up getting that water lily tuber put into some moistened, like lightly dampened peat moss. It's just sitting on the greenhouse table right now. I haven't taken it down to the, uh, basement yet, but it has been wrapped up and I have no idea if I did it right or if it's going to survive. We will see. It felt a little soft, like not soft, not like squishy, like rotted soft, but like, I don't know. I'm just so used to dahlia tubers that sure. like, that's my only point of reference and like potatoes, you yeah. know, tubers like that, that have some real firmness to them. This one felt a little soft. So we might be bu buying another water lily this next spring. Which, you know, by the time I was packing it up, I thought I should have just left it in its pot. <laughs> just left it in its pot, put it in the corner in the greenhouse, and kept some water on it. Yeah. Right? That would have been easier. Sure. I don't know. We learned. We'll learn. I will learn from this <laughs> process. Um, it was actually a very pleasant time in that pond. I bought myself the chest waders and some, like, waterproof chemical. They were, like, for chemical. Your dad was all concerned. Yeah, my dad immediately. I, I, I pulled up to Andrews, and he happened to be standing on the sidewalk. And I said, hey, look, I'm now the proud owner of a pair of chest waders. He's like, don't bend over. That's how people get them. They get them filled up, and then they drowned. drown. 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 <laughs> so yeah, he was all stressed out that they were going to, you know, and yeah. I know that that kind of stuff happens, but I'm not in moving water, like a river situation. Well, yeah, there's no moving water. And also it's like three and a half feet deep. <laughs> but still, so I mean, like you, it'd be impressive if you found a way <laughs> to like get that. <laughs> I know. I was kind of like, take the wind out of my sails, dad. Like I went down to the outdoorsman, which I never go to that store hardly ever. Yeah. And like, I tried on all of these waiters and like, yeah, bought myself a pair. Anyway, they made it so pleasant. They have padded knees, so I was able to crawl around on the rocks, and it was just, it felt very nice. comfortable. There's something about being in water, too. You feel kind of buoyant yeah. a little bit, and it was just like a real pleasant time. I enjoyed it. Plus, it was fairly tangible because... Yeah, it was it, pretty green. It was pretty bad. And ever since, so I, I had the uh, Ion Gen, which is the thing that... They said we would struggle with string algae the first year or two while we, you know, get that ecosystem gets all balanced. Um, but the ion gen emits particles of copper, zinc, and, and silver, I think. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But it, that's what kills the algae and helps control it. So I had kicked that thing up to like, I think, nine or something a while before. And then I cleaned the algae out that day, that day. And then the next day I went out and cleaned a little bit more and then I kicked it down and it looks really good. Oh, good. So I think I'm going to turn that thing, just like power it down. Mm -hmm. Um, it's interesting uh, talking to different people. Um, 
if you talk to like different pond people, they'll be like, oh, I just keep it at 10 all the time, which I guess is not good for the fish. Like their livers or something like that? Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's not good. Fish but have then livers? Other people like... They have like, livers, right? Well, I don't know. I never thought about that. <laughs> Brian was saying, oh, don't keep it on for more. He's like 24 or 48 hours. Don't keep it at 10. Oh. And... Um, I probably had it on for two to three days yeah, at it's, nine. It's like one of those things where some people say one thing and some people say another. I, so I don't really know. I'm try, I try to be mindful of it yeah, and not keep it on. Yeah, probably better. You don't want to kill all the fish. No. And they look very good. The fish look great. Uh, okay. So anyway, Sandy said, where's the shark? Do they hibernate? You know, I did a little reading on the, it's a high fin banded shark and they, you know, are algae eaters and such. This one needs to get with it with yeah. the algae eating. But um, chop, I, guess, I guess that when water, the water temperature goes below 55, they pretty much kind of go dormant is what I've read. And so I think that's what's gone on. In, most of the time when you go out there, all the fish are just like squished into that little fish cave down yeah. at the bottom of the pond. Sometimes like the first time I walked out there, uh, I think not the first time I walked out there the other day and I looked in the pond, I could see zero fish. Mm. I thought, what the heck? And so I had to go to the side of the pond and look underneath that fish cave and I could see their, like their eyes yeah. <laughs> poking out. I think out. they like being in close quarters because like they move in schools, Yeah. you know, and I think that they like the, the security of like having each other mm -hmm. close by. Sure. Uh, Jeannie Adams said, quick question, can you use the algae as compost slash fertilizer or do you just put it around a plant to break down on its own? I don't know. Well, next year when we get the compost pile going. Are you going to get one going? Yeah. Throw it on the compost pile. Cool. See how it works. <laughs> uh, DH said, brave gal, I, I also have to clean our pond, but in a bathing suit in water that is a balmy 86 degrees, which is my preferred temperature. 84 yeah. to 86. If I have to be in a bathing suit, that's the water temperature that I prefer. Um, question. Did you introduce the frogs into your pond when you put the fish in or did they find their way in naturally? But probably not since you are in the desert. No, they found their way naturally. Who knows where they came from? Yeah. I've always wondered that. Yeah. Like where are all these slugs and you know, well, frogs and they said the people who are here putting the pond in, they said you build it and they will come. Yeah. They will find you and they, they do. It's weird. But they're so fun. Uh, it's bon gotta be don't you think it's gotta be like eggs that are brought in on some of the plants or it something? It could be, yeah. Because that's the, the the thing, like we're planting all these plants, but th they were not the plants were not grown here. Right. They were grown on the other side of Oregon or Southern you know, California. Wherever, Southern California, yeah, wherever they came from. Well I know we immediately had water boatmen, like those little black one right? Mm -hmm. Water boatmen with little black, like beetle y looking things with the yeah. oar feet. <laughs> So good at explaining what things look like. Um, Bonnie said, this doesn't look fun, but hard work makes beauty. It was actually so pleasant. What is the green tray called that you were trimming up the lily tuber in and where does one find it? Find it. That is uh, called a tidy tray, right? That's the- We're trying to bring it in on the store. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Fiona said, that pond seems a huge amount of maintenance. It's actually not. It's just that whenever we do anything with the pond, I try to film it so you can see. Um, but it really you hasn't. You haven't gotten in. To, no. You've cleaned it twice this year. Did I get in before? Oh, I got in to just do plants. Yeah. I got in once, one time to do plant, plant maintenance, which I could have done most of it from the edge, I think. Um, and then the, this time I got in to clean the algae. That is it. It's like that with a lot of things though. Like a lot of people would look at any part of your garden and be like, oh, it seems like too much work mm -hmm. or like the lawn. Yeah. I love mowing the lawn. People right. talk about like, oh, the maintenance. And I'm like, yeah, I want to get on the lawnmower to mow the lawn. It's mm -hmm. like me time, you know? Mm -hmm. So it just is. So your... that's why. <laughs> well, yeah, it's your perspective yeah. on whatever it is. Well, that was Some me time for sure. For like me. the maintenance of a pond mm -hmm. and they like messing with it and yeah. tinkering and. I like it like a million times more than I thought I was going to. Yeah. To be I quite think honest. everybody else kind of knew you would like it. I just... Probably. I was just so hesitant because all I've seen is poor examples for ponds I, in terms of the ones that I have been involved even slightly. Yeah, sure. Or have been around in my like growing up years. Uh, they've just been like a headache and people complain about them, the people that I've known that have had them. But none of them have had the Aquascape ecosystem pond. Well, Greg told me that I think he said like half of their business is fixing people's DIY ponds, hmm. you know, like people try to, they do it themselves yeah. and they kind of screw it up and mm -hmm. then they call a professional 
And that's you yeah. know, where Aquascape comes in and fixes it. Well, perfect example. My grandparents have a pond. They had a swimming pool all the years of us growing up. And that's where we did the bulk of our swimming. And then when you know people stopped, stopped using it quite as much and it just was a hard one to, to maintain, they changed it to, into a pond. But it does not have like the kind of water movement or filtrations that, that ours does. And my grandpa, like a few times, has said to me, like, oh... The way yours is set up, like that is the way to do it. And, you know, he just kind of marvels at the whole, because I explained how all of it works and how, you know, you know, all the systems and stuff they have in place. And he, I think he's like coveting yeah. the pond setup that we have because his has been a little bit harder to maintain. Um, it, the back part of this comment, regardless of the leaves, did you run it by the pond guy before you posted this? That can't be good for his business that puts me off. <laughs> Scrubbing rocks and scooping up that green crap isn't how he advertises his ponds. <laughs> well, I guess you can see it that way. <laughs> no, I don't have to run anything by anyone <laughs> before no. he posts it. That's the beauty of, I guess, how we've set up how we do our videos. Yeah. Truly, and maybe I should have made it a little bit more clear in this video, it truly has not been a lot of work. And they will tell you straight up front, like it takes a, a minute for the ecosystem to balance. You can't just expect to like introduce this huge you know, body of water to your landscape. And there's stuff on the rocks and you know all that, the business and your different climate too has a lot to do with it. What's around it has a lot to do with it. So it takes a while for things to adjust. It's not like immediately no maintenance pond. Mm -hmm. You have to get a rhythm. And they said it was like getting a puppy, basically. Like you have to treat it like you're getting a puppy. You've got to train it and you got to, you know, kind of get it into its rhythm and then you're good to go. So we're still in that training mode, uh, but I enjoy it. It's so peaceful. It's just, it's like me time out there. I listen to the water and um, that day I turned the fire pit on. I could sit there and just like enjoy it with the, the warmth. for the dream stream? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Shane said, just started watching your videos and love them. Wondering what name brand of gardening drip tape you use. That's Drip Depot, right? Uh, the drip it's not tape? the brand. I think it's Toro oh. is the ones that I've been getting. But DripDepot.com is right where it is. That's where I've been it. buying it is yeah. DripDepot.com. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy with them. I've also ordered some from Amazon, but it was fulfilled by Drip Depot, I think. Oh, really? So it's like, you know, same, came from the same, same place. place. But yeah, I want to say it was Toro. Gotcha. Chica Deanna said, I was interesting to see how you tackled this, Laura. I have so many questions. Curious about your water source, city water or well water, if that makes a difference in condition, conditions for algae or overgrowth. I'm sure it can. We had water trucked in for this pond. Um, but, you know, if you're, you're, you're filling it like with irrigation water or whatever, it could have runoff from, yeah. you know, other people's fields. Well, or I don't know where the water came from, from the truck. It I, was city. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We, we, figured that out before yeah it was city water um so yeah we we paid for the water to be trucked in to fill this pond and i didn't know where they were going to bring it from either i asked him that day i asked um steve yeah so but i'm sure that all those things play a part in what happens right after i remember like it initially right when they filled it because there's tons of dust and dirt and stuff all over those rocks it all kind of puffs up you know mm -hmm. in the water and it looks really cloudy especially in the the bigger reservoir, but even that next day, like the whole water intake area, um, like the, what do they call it? The wetland filter, mm -hmm. where, you know, it's like this deep and there's a rocks you can walk around in there. That was crystal, yeah, crystal clear. And it was beautiful. Ah, oh, it was so pretty. Kava said, if the tropicals were in pond pots, could they be overwintered in the greenhouse in some water? Probably. Did I do it that way? No, I made a huge mess in the greenhouse, possibly killed my plant. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Debbie said, the pond looks great. Do you have to worry about removing koi eggs when doing cleanup? It's, po it's probably not the right time of year for that, but I was curious. I never thought about that. Do you have to, well, they eat them, don't they? I don't know. We'll just find out when we get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I need to do some research. Okay, next video is an overview of the layout of our garden <laughs> with before and afters. You guys, Aaron edited this video, and I don't know how many hours. I think I put in over 20 hours of yeah. editing. What a beast of a video, but what an awesome like resource almost, you know? Like, yeah. it's such a, a great video to be like, just watch this one, and it will explain our garden. Sure. You know, and things, they do change, and, you know, things will, you know, need to modify here and there um, but it was a really good it was a good look back and I think you kind of I mean it was feeling like a beast especially toward the end but it's kind of fun to look back 
yeah. and see all of those old projects and see like how far we we actually have come and what we've accomplished in this space. And also kind of uh, it's motivating, I think. Like it makes me feel motivated to keep going. Sure. And like, wow, you know, if we really just do keep pushing forward, we'll get there. We'll I think, you know, that initial drone footage when we first moved in, it looked, the area looked so pretty and kind of green and stuff, mm -hmm. but um, it's not really a great representation of what the place looks like the majority of the year. Yeah. You know, it's like too bad that we had to get rid of a lot of the trees and... Um, well, but you and even, I know what was wrong with those trees, and if yeah. you zoom in, you're like, oh, right. ah, that's half dead. Yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing. I don't know. What was your favorite part about that, that editing? Well, I think it's always kind of fun to like reminisce, mm -hmm. and it's fun to see all the improvements mm -hmm. that we've done and you know that we still need to make. There's still a lot of areas that need to still get buttoned up, mm -hmm. but I think we've made massive improvements to the usability of our space yes. and making it more like the way that we like it mm -hmm. and you know and more more well you say usability um which equals it being a much more pleasant process yeah like all your chores out in the garden are much more pleasant when the water's close by yeah or you've got electric close by or you know you have what you need the infrastructure set up or there's conduit nearby yeah so you need to run a drip that's fine we can run it right under the grass pathway because conduit has been put in you know yeah. in areas that i would never have thought of doing that i'm also really happy that we prioritized buying land whenever it was available to us because i think you know i mean who knows what the area around us would look like we could have a lot more houses near us mm -hmm. if we hadn't have done that right because we were kind of you know jumping out on a ledge to mm -hmm. to make that work yeah and it wasn't always easy like get it making sure the money thing worked out <laughs> Sometimes you're kind of like, I hope this YouTube thing is <laughs> going to keep working because, mm -hmm. you know, it's in those early days, especially. Yeah. Like we had no idea that um, it was going to keep going. Like mm -hmm. there's always this underlying like people could quit watching at any moment. Yeah. And then the money just goes away. And yeah. then how do you pay for the land? <laughs> how do yeah. you pay for this land that you just bought? Right. You know? Yeah. I think, you know, the, it feels like we've been able to do it fairly quickly, but I feel like we're making pretty good decisions. You guys know that pretty much most of what we get, we pour right back into our property. I think it's pretty clear to see that, mm -hmm. yeah. That's where our money goes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure. Yep. Uh, Saint said, so fun to see how your space and you've grown uh, and changed. Is there anything that you would change looking back? No, I think we've talked about it. We probably would do maybe more of a ring around the property with more evergreens and trees. Maybe. As opposed to that ring road. I don't know. I feel like I'm settling in to just like how things are and just yeah. happy. I'm happy with how things are. Yeah, I am too, actually. Yeah. The more, I think the more like land that we've acquired around us, the more I've settled in. Yeah. Um, more trees and a little bit more growth. Yeah. You start seeing, like we notice, especially on those um, Shade Master hunting locusts. How much growth growth they've put yeah. on just in this like they've been in the ground maybe one two and, and a half, half seasons years, yeah. oh is it two seasons two yeah i think seasons? so i think two they've really bulked up but to see that is super encouraging right. you're like we're gonna get there we're gonna have shade it'll be a shade garden one day yeah oh i can't wait for that kimberly said this might be one of my favorite videos thank you for the overview and comparison i've been watching for years and seeing the changes in one video is a lot of fun i'm i the only one wondering which kitty is responsible for that pop in the background okay no that was kind of me but kind of Samantha as well. So we had a shade, like a pop-up uh, light a diffuser, diffuser yeah. in the Hartley so we could film in there because the sun is low enough in the sky that it's coming in through the side windows at the moment. So when we're in there, we've got like this, these multiple light diffusers up. And one of them you had up uh, over the doors and it was resting on the door handle. And so it's kind of going like this. And then there's a potted amaryllis sitting right on the edge. Samantha opened the door and it popped the shade over to where I didn't realize it had caught the lip of the pot. Mm -hmm. So I went in there to fix it and just finished the job. <laughs> I didn't realize because I couldn't see it. Sure. The shade was like blocking it, yeah. but it was caught on it. So anyway, I did uh, right before we filmed that, I actually grabbed the amaryllis. It's the one for your mom, um, which it still hasn't started to grow. So I haven't really felt like we need to like get it over there right away. But I went over and scooped it up, got a brand new pot, potted it back up, watered it, put it back on the windowsill, and then just kind of like, like 
I don't know why I didn't just finish it. Well, I remember you asking me, um, is that in the shot? And I was like, oh, I don't think it's in the shot. <laughs> yeah, I do remember asking you yeah. that too. <laughs> anyway, doesn't matter. It's a reality, I guess. Um, Peter Winston said, that was very helpful to see your whole property from a bird's eye view. Also, the chronological pro progression from start to present. Do you offer tours of your property or do you, do you plan to in the future? Um, we've addressed that one several times. We do not right now. Um, as, as long as this is our primary residence, we will not open it up to the public. Like if we ever decide to like move and keep this place and I don't know I mean we've talked about all the different possibilities of opening it up at this point I, I don't feel like it's at us in a state to even yeah. open it it needs to have more maturity before that happens but so for the time being no uh, Jennifer said, such a fantastic recap for those of us that have been along the journey and working with our own gardens at the same time. For your new Julia Child rose trees, will you do any special care for the winter? Pray, <laughs> pray that they survive. So far we haven't had cold enough temperatures or a swing, uh, like white, big enough swing in temperatures for me to worry about them too much. So We're zone seven now, so we're good. Yeah, hey, I did ask my mom, fi figure out where you ordered this from, see if they have more because I'd like to plant two more somewhere, just even tucked into flower beds so that if one of those happens to die, I can dig one up and move it. Yeah. Because it's huge and you wouldn't be able to start with this little baby rose tree. I mean, it would take forever for them to love, even out. Tina said, I'm extremely tired for you guys, for all that you guys have done in the last three years. Holy cow, it's really amazing to see the change, so fun. Question, will you be at the garden show this year? We have no plans to be at anything at the moment. We kind of decide last minute on stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, we, you know, we've been to Seattle a bunch of times. I yeah, don't really want to go I there. Either. No. I wouldn't mind going back to um, cultivate, although that's not open. That's an industry. That's like an industry. Uh huh. I don't know. There's one in Chicago. I don't really want to go to the Philadelphia one necessarily. I loved it the first year we went. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the we've Holland. been there th three times now, I think. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, that was twice. Could have been it's three. three. You know, it would be kind of fun though to go check out. Espoma has a new facility, and they're like right, they're in New Jersey, just right next to Philadelphia. Yeah. And um, or maybe their new facility is in Philadelphia, not in Phil Pennsylvania. Yeah. But that'd yeah. be a fun trip. Yeah, something to think about. Uh, Lori said, so incredibly helpful to see this. Amazing to see how much impact you've made. When you plan, do you draw by hand, or do you have an app you use? If I draw anything, it's usually in. It's on an iPad. I either use Google Maps uh -huh. or I send my drone up and just take a picture of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And then I just like with the Apple Pencil, like whatever the app is called, like your photos app. Markup. Markup. Yeah. yeah. But it's not like its own app. It's like in the photos app. Yeah. It's like so, you hit edit on your photo and then yeah. there's like a little pencil and sign. And you, yeah. And that's markup. So it's nothing, it's nothing super but fancy. But the Apple Pencil has been pretty helpful to make yeah. alterations and changes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Patricia said, how often do you have to change the plastic on the greenhouse? Well, the last time it was changed is when we put the double layer on, mm -hmm. the new stuff. Um, that was year before last. That was in 20, when was that? 2021? They advertise a lot of the plastic as like two-year plastic. The and first batch of plastic lasted for like five yeah. years. We use I it think, until it's like. I think you just need to change the plastic whenever you need to change plastic. Yeah. Like if it's got rips and tears and you can't really patch it up anymore, mm -hmm. time for time for new plastic. Garden centers is probably going like 10 plus years. Still works. They're it not seemed, trying to heat theirs, though. It does seem to help at Andrew's uh, putting the shade cloth on it. Mm -hmm. Extra that, layer of... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Protects it a little more. Right. Uh, PT8019 said, do you think all the land once belonged to your place and you're buying it back? Yes. So this house used to have... The, well, they say it had a thousand acres around it and it was a sheep farm back in the day before like the addition was made to the house and all that. So we're just kind of like picking up tiny yeah. little parts of it <laughs> just around the house. BKBRP said, so amazing how much it has changed in just a few years. Question, did the red root, redwood tree survive? No. Jury's still out on that. It's, the jury's not out. The judge has ruled. It's dead. <laughs> what makes you the judge? Well, because I can see I will my be two so, eyes. I will be so happy when that thing just pushes new growth in the spring. You think it will? You never know. Plants are pretty resilient. I think I kind of know. Well, mm. we'll see. I won't okay. touch it. I promise I won't touch it. Okay, perfect. Go out there with some extra stuff, some Thrive, extra biotone. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, next video was decorating the Hartley tree and the kitchen window. Uh, that was a fun one. That was on a weekend. I had the kids in there with me and I thought, okay, I know that Benjamin especially won't want to help me with decorating, but I kind of like to get the heavy, the heavy ornaments done first and then just kind of set them loose with all the other ones that are lighter weight. Um, so I knew it was going to take me a little while to kind of get to that point. So I filled up a pot full of sand and fairy garden uh, little pieces. And let me tell you what, that has been the source of so much entertainment. They love it. Over the past week. I mean, that day. And then Samantha goes out there a couple times every day and the sand is everywhere. I should have put tarp down. I thought that keep it nicely contained in the pot. Well, it won't, it won't take too much work to suck it up, though. I hope, I hope not. At least it's a, like a patio floor almost. Yeah. So, uh, and they were really happy with it. But I love how the Hartley tree turned out. We used the dried oranges from last year, a lot of glass ornaments, some green ones. And then we went in and uh, Benjamin and I decorated the window in the kitchen. We used leftover oranges from the Hartley tree. I used a faux garland. And I had picked up some sparkly ornaments down at the garden center. It was super simple. Um, I tried that, the viral um, tension rod hack. Oh yeah. Have you seen that on yeah. Instagram or wherever? Um, and it's like you get a tension rod and uh, decorate it with your garland and then put it up where you want it. Well, I couldn't find a white tension rod that was real thick. The the one the only one that was white that was white enough was too flimsy. Oh. So what you didn't see in that video was me trying to do that hack and it didn't work because the whole thing like bowed down in the center. It's I didn't not even... a hack. No. Well, I mean, in every one of the videos where people are trying it, they're using this like robust looking tension rod. Or like, where maybe do you get also, that? Also, if you did it like over a door, it would like, you wouldn't, it's not as long. Maybe. This is six feet. Middle. I mean, I saw it like, you know, in big openings to oh, like a really? great room or whatever. Uh, yeah. Huh. So, but their tension rods that they're using are big. If I wanted to get a big diameter one, the only colors that Home Depot and our town at the moment has because probably everybody's bought all the white ones are silver and black and i wasn't sure how much i wanted to cover the window had i known i was going to go all the way around i could have bought either one of them and you wouldn't have seen it but anyway it worked out um pv reekin said it's all look it all looks so magical are you going to do a fun winter project for the kiddos this year like your grass in the greenhouse project last year i haven't thought of anything yet maybe we do a giant sandbox i mean she would yeah. die yeah. she would love it Right. Maybe we should do that. I think that would go further than the grass. And she's a little older this year, so sure. she wouldn't be quite as like, but you no, know, that wouldn't work unless we covered it because the cats, cats sleep in there. So you, but you could cover it. Oh, that'd be so much work. It really would be. And it would be heavy work. Boot the cats out. <laughs> Aaron loves the cats. I really liked having cats prior to having kids. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just, they're fine. The cats are fine, but I don't have the same feelings toward them as I once did. Yeah. Jane Duncan said, the tree is beautiful. Do you rearrange the ornaments that the kids put on the tree that are misplaced or just leave as is? I don't um, rearrange any of Benjamin's because he would notice. He's at that age and he really tries. He listens to my instructions. I tell him, okay, so we've got six of this style of ornament. Let's just make sure that they end up, you know, all dispersed around the tree and not really close together so that there's interest all over the tree. He takes that in and he yeah. really tries. So even if a couple, I hear him talk, talking to himself like, oh, nope, that's too close. We gotta move it to another branch, you know? So he really tries. So I don't mess with any of his. Now Samantha hangs all of her ornaments on one branch. <laughs> so there's like seven ornaments. So I kept taking like one or two off when she turned around to get another one and I quickly put them on and then she just keep hanging. Like yeah. it was this <laughs> never ending. Yeah. Never ending branch that would accept more and more ornaments. So, and she doesn't notice at all. Patricia said, you mentioned you had real garland in boxes. Do you need to spritz them with water or do you leave them out open outside? So what I have are boxes of bulk greens that I ordered in through my parents' garden center, the same stuff that they order for their garland and wreath making class. So it's like a box of bulk noble fir boughs and a box of princess pine. I have used a few of the greens up in the pots in the former Versailles garden, what, what are we calling it? Or trying to Persephone call it garden. the Persephone garden now, because that's where the Persephone statue is. That's like the best, Yeah. the best suggestion I've seen. One of you guys suggested that. I think several people suggested it. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. So that was a good one. Uh, anyway, I don't know. This year I've felt so much more relaxed and I've done, I swear I've done more decorating. Like we have six trees up and none of them felt like a push or like well maybe it's just not having little tiny babies around well may maybe maybe yeah samantha was difficult last year yeah and in fact i actually got all of our window candles out this year for the first time in a couple years because i thought 
this is the first year I have kids that understand when I say, leave my candles alone. Yeah. Um, I did leave a couple extras out so Samantha could play with like the loose ones. Sure. Um, but anyway, all my windows have window candles now for the first time in a while. I remember Benjamin, he loved lights and flashlights and like wall sw light switches. Yeah. And he would gather up all of my window candles and he'd line them up like on the hearth of the fireplace. Yeah. <laughs> so every night I'd have to go redistribute my candles right. to the proper windows. But anyway, yeah, it's been just a really delightful year and really chill. I don't know. The rest of the greens I have out there, I think that we're going to, I know my mom and sister are going to probably come over, maybe my brother, and we'll make some wreaths and garlands just in the greenhouse there. I think that would be really fun. Good way to use them up. Um, Anne said, watching your recent videos has really gotten me into the holiday spirit. Well, that makes me happy. The Hartley tree is beautiful. Curious about Benjamin's outdoor de decorated tree at 1156. Did he decide to undecorate it? No, the wind did. The wind undecorated it and we found the stockpile. It all blew down the lane. Um, that very first spruce tree, the second spruce tree, the green one that we had installed when the corner garden was still there, the triangle mm. garden, it all like gathered under that tree in the tree well. Oh, really? It stopped everything. The paper chain, huh. all of the ornaments, it still might be under there. I told Benjamin, he said, yeah, I know. I know. I saw it there. I don't know if he felt discouraged. Maybe I'll go gather it up and redecorate yeah. it for him. Connie said, what a fun and festive video. I uh, love the look of the Hartley tree. So beautiful. Where did you get those glass icicles? Those are Kurt Adler icicles. They came in a 24 pack. I ordered them on Amazon and they range from three and a half inches to five and a half inches. It's kind of an assortment in that box. Uh, Rob G. Weston said, bugger, never heard you swear. It's not a swear word here. <laughs> bugger. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was talking about those gingerbread houses and how the icing was a bugger. Yeah. It was hard to get them put together. Um, anyway, I think it's a swear word right in the UK. Is it? I think so. Huh. But I'm confused here. by a lot of like swear words. Like how, I don't know, why words are even considered swear words. And, I don't know. And like in different countries, they're considered different square words. Like we say things and then somewhere else they're like, oh, we don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you tell me why you use ribbon in your trees and not tinsel? Well, this year I haven't used any ribbon in any of my trees and I love it. I feel like ribbon for me is kind of out. Ribbon and tree toppers just kind of, really? they clog up the look of the tree or it's just like too much yeah. masking of the tree. And I want to see the structure of the tree and I want the ornaments to shine. Um, and I feel like maybe it was just the type of ribbon I ha have for my trees and I've been using it for too many years, like 15, 16, 17. We've been married for 17 years. Yeah. Um, I've been using it for so long that maybe I just felt like it's time for something different, a different look. Ribbon is out. Ribbon's out. Ornaments are in. Ornaments are in. Tinsel is fun. I've seen more and more trees be featured with tinsel. I don't know that I can actually get that far. Tinsel is like, I mean, I remember putting it on as a kid like and a then mess. it seems like it kind of went like, I don't yeah. know, I didn't see anybody using it for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have a vintage tree, so I've got, it's like a fifties kind of vibe, forties, fifties, and I've got some vintage ornaments on it. Um, and I did get, it's like a tinsel garland though. So it's like contained and it goes around the tree and that's really fun. It's the only tree other than the kid's tree upstairs that has multicolored lights. It's in our kitchen this year. Still need to find the tree skirt. It's my last thing. Will said, will you maybe make a Christmas cookies video? What for traditional Christmas cookies do you have in the U S which ones are your favorite? I hadn't thought about doing that. Probably. Well, you do have that one that's been passed down from generations. Oh my gosh. I, so I had, a, I had a friend. Full house. <laughs> yeah. I had a friend who uh, posted, this is years ago, posted on Facebook, like her grandmother's. <laughs> and I don't know if it was. Was like, it, it might have been a joke. Maybe it was a joke, but it was it was totally the it recipe. It looked sincere. <laughs> off the, it did. Off the Nestle. Well, it was like in her grandmother's handwriting yeah. on a little card. I'm like, that is the Nestle Toll House recipe. Yeah. Like, I know that by heart because right. I've made them so many times in my life. A lot of people probably know it by heart. Yeah. Anyway, that was kind of funny. Uh, Leanne said, is there a name on the package of butterfly ornaments that we might be able to find them online? There was no name or indication of what those were that I could find. Um, I bought those at Franz Witte last year. I was back there yesterday, uh, which you probably won't have seen that video by the time this one goes out, but we were back shopping there yesterday and I didn't see any more of those. So I don't know. Okay. We're on to the last video, which I think, are we missing one from this week? I think we got off around Thanksgiving. Uh, we did too many videos at, 
when we skipped around Thanksgiving and then last week we also did too many videos. Oh. I think we're trying to get back on track now okay. or something. I'm not sure. Okay. So only four videos for today, but it was planting yews and decorating a few doors in the balcony for Christmas. I planted eight of the Stonehenge dark druid yews, which are beautiful. I had planted five um, earlier this season and I actually tried to give away the rest of those yews twice. Really? And both times I couldn't find a taker and I'm so glad that I didn't. I didn't, hadn't even thought to continue on that idea around that stone path because there was so much stuff planted there. Sure. I just couldn't see it. You know, this is a great time of year to go through and try to figure out where you want more evergreen yes. interest. Yeah, and not necessarily planting it. Like I explained in the video, I don't actively go seek out plants this time of year and buy them to put in my garden. Uh, but if we happen to have some sitting here, you know, they are better off in the ground than they are trying to overwinter in their containers. So getting them in the ground, if you have a window, is better for sure. Um, so I got those eight planted, and then I decorated the door by the Persephone garden. And uh, we Benjamin swapped the pillows out there. We hung up some reeds. And then I did the balcony and we did the kitchen door as well, which the biggest part for the kitchen door was just cleaning up all the junk around it. I mean, we had the cooler from Thanksgiving and a garbage sack, a bunch of pizza boxes, yeah. a chair, like just a bunch of random, you know, guys know how that goes. You just kind of sling stuff off when you're going into the kitchen door and it just collects. Well, especially when it's cold. Yeah. Because you like walking it all the way to the dumpsters. It's a long Yeah, long our walk. garbage is a, a walk a distance away. So it kind of just collects there for a minute and then yeah. take it out. Uh, Stephanie said, now that you're a 7A, will you try new varieties of plants like a crepe myrtle? No. I'm in Oklahoma zone 7B now, so no real change for me. No, I, I just, I don't trust that zone chart. Like not even a little 7A. bit. No. Um, so no, I will not be trying those. And I don't know that they would like our high pH anyway. I mean, I guess if I just can't see any garden centers willing to bring those sorts of things in. Well, there's a lot of varieties that I've talked to your dad about mm -hmm. that he says that they've like dabbled with over the years. Mm -hmm. And then as a garden center, because people want to return things that don't, you know, Thrive. prosper, mm -hmm. uh, then they're like, nope, not carrying these anymore. Cause you don't want to deal with customers saying like, I planted this and yeah. you don't want to put a little note on plants that are like, I have this, but I'm not going to give you a refund if it dies. Cause mm -hmm. like this plant very well might die. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful as a garden center. Yeah. Uh, Sally said, how do you secure your artificial trees from blowing over in winds? You can try, try as you might, they will still blow over in the wind. We had that nine footer, you know, out in the middle of that brick circle patio or brick patio with the circle shape in the center. And um, Paul and Bethany had put these like round stepping, so heavy stepping stones on all the legs. And then we covered it with some harvest cloth, like a snow skirt almost around the tree. And that thing blew over on Thanksgiving. It I just... think if you did maybe some like guy wires. Yeah. I think that you know, would that probably, probably keep it. But yeah. That's... It's a lot of work. A lot of work, yeah. You just flopping a stepping stone on top seems a lot easier. I did go and I tipped it back up uh, and then put the stones back in place. And it hasn't tipped over again yet. It hasn't been windy yet. It hasn't though. been as windy as it was that day. Um, the one on the balcony tipped over too. I have not done any anchoring to that one though. Our discoverer said, love the shape and color of the use. Would they work in an almost completely shaded spot? I have a spot in my backyard that receives almost zero sun due to a very large spruce in my neighbor's yard and a large maple in my yard. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead with the use or a boxwood. Those are both really good evergreens for a shady location. Rebecca McLaughlin said, can you tell me why I'm supposed to plant iris when I'm supposed to plant iris and daylilies. I've had so many different answers and uh, do I add bulb fertilizer now? Also, do I water them in? You can plant, to me, you can plant either of those whenever you can get them in the ground. I think iris, typically you can buy those rhizomes in the fall um, and you put them in and you know that's when I do a lot of my dividing, it seems like, and I'm not even sure that's the right time to divide them. I just do stuff in our garden, like I do not follow any specific guidelines and I feel like that can trip people up sometimes. It's like just do it when it works out. When you get a hold of the daylily, put it in the ground, water it in for sure. Um, if that happens to be now, just make sure it stays, you know, decently moist. Don't let it dry out, but it's better off in the ground than another time. I think typically too, like with daylily perennials, shrubs, those kind of things, they, they say the best time is spring, you know, when it's cooler out. They have some time to be in the cool before it gets hot. They can root in that whole year and then, you know, they're better off through the winter. But the way we kind of plant and garden is just kind of willy-nilly. Willy yeah. It's just kind of on the haphazard side of things. Sure. We have pretty good luck.
Plants are resilient. Robin Hill said, I think I have dirt envy. Anything I water with a container, the water just rolls away. How do I fix this? Also, right after I ordered five bare root roses, our 7B temps plunged at, to 19 at night. How long can I hill uh, in the roses? Till March? Yeah, you absolutely can. Hill them in. Make sure that you splash some water on them every once in a while so they don't dry out. Uh, but yep, you can hill them in and just you know deal with them in the spring. And that happens. That's I think that's when most of the damage happens is when temperatures swing and your plants aren't ready for it. That can be very damaging. Uh, as far as watering things and having the water go right in, you've just got to keep amending it with like organic matter. Compost, compost. and gypsum. Compost, like compost, Like as much compost. compost and gypsum as you can afford. Yeah, yeah. I think that that is the best thing to do and it helps, definitely helps facilitate, yep. yeah, that. Cheryl said, whatever happened with the hibiscus plants that you planted this year, did you make tea or jam with the harvest? I did not. Those plants just sat there. They sat there forever, right toward the very end when I was, we left the artichokes and hibiscus out there. They were the last plants out there. And they had formed up buds and then the frost took them. Mm. So it was just one of those things that maybe I waited to plant them too late. Maybe I should have tried to force them a little bit earlier. Um, they were a decent looking plant. Uh, maybe I'll try it again. I don't know. I'm not a tea drinker. So for me, it's kind of, I am not a tea drinker. No, you are not. Or coffee Makes me drinker. gag. <laughs> like I literally gag when I have tea. What about coffee? I don't gag when I have coffee, but I don't like it. You like the smell of it. I love the smell of coffee. Mm -hmm. It smells so much better than it actually tastes, but I like coffee too. Yeah. too. Uh, Chris said, you mentioned that you've made evergreen garland before. Is there a video on that? There is, but I do plan, I think I'm gonna be making some garland this year. So we'll probably have a video up about that soon. And then Carol said, do you and your mom plan to go foraging this year? Probably not just because we have the boxes of of garland, of garland, of greens here. I mean, if we needed some pine cones or things like that, we could run up to the hills, but it's hard to make time to yeah. do that now. It's a little bit more busy and schedules and all of that. It's hard to coordinate to get like out of town to do that. Maybe we can. Got lucky that one year that you and I went and they had trimmed the sides of the yeah. roads. Well, and that's also the other thing that like people need to keep in mind when you're foraging, you're almost doing them a favor by the stuff that you're cutting right along the road because don't, encourage, to do don't it. encourage too much because you're going to get people saying it is it's illegal true. to do that yeah. um definitely <laughs> check the policies of your of where you're going yeah. um if it's you know rangeland or if it's a, you know a, a forest says, a national um, forest like small amounts for personal use is fine yeah right yeah if you're going out there and harvesting christmas trees to sell it a lot yeah that's frowned that's, upon yeah, <laughs> yeah. um so yeah, you definitely check before you go. I always feel like when I cut, especially red twig dogwood up there, I'm like, oh, this plant's gonna look so much better next year. Yeah, I know, right? You're gonna have so much better color from this plant because you're getting rid of that old growth and the right. best colors on one to two year old wood. I just always remember thinking that yeah. every time and like kind of thinning it out a little bit, healthier plant, Sure. you know, all that business, but yeah, that is it. That is the last question from this week's recap video. Anything else we need to talk about? I don't oh, think so. I don't think so either. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.